and get it out of the way. Any updates on the waiver appeals? I had no updates. Uh, we've issued both appeals. I, I can't remember if I've spoken publicly about that detail or not, but both appeals have been submitted to the NCAA and obviously waiting to hear back. And time is of the essence with, with us taking the floor for the first time Monday. Do you anticipate a big class action type thing? As it seems like a lot of teams with a lot of players in the same boat. You know, I think my focus right now is on Aziz and Jamil's well-being. Um, and I have said this many times. That's not a line. This has been this has been extremely difficult for them. I'm confused. Um, so imagine how somebody at their stage in life and at their age feels. They're they're confused. So that's my first focus. My my second focus on this appeal process. And I'm I'm proud of the uh, the appeal that's been put forward. I, I thought I thought the original waivers met the criteria and the standards that were laid out. Um, I, I think we only enhance those things, and the or the appeal only enhances those things. So that's my uh, my focus right now. Is is going through this appeal process, following the guidelines we were asked to follow, and uh, and seeing, you know, hopefully getting some news here soon so we can get these guys on the court. I know it's early, West, but what do you like about your team right now? I've liked their willingness to come in the gym and work at it every day. Um, they've had a, a good summer and a good fall in terms of approach. Uh, they're, to this stage, been a very unselfish group. You know, I, certainly we got guys that – want to do well individually and um you know have high goals for themselves individually but you get a sense to this stage that everybody's willing to sacrifice a little bit for our team to be successful Th those two things uh to this stage have been good but it's early and, and we got a lot of work to do your four days from tip off are you confident or do you feel good about where you're at at point guard with with two new guys that that haven't done it yet I feel like we have the right guys at point guard. You know, I, I do. I I think that, and they've done the right things from the time they got here till now to prepare for college basketball. Uh, are they where we want them to be in January when Big 12 play starts? They're not, and that's okay. You know, we didn't expect them to be, uh, but they've done a nice job to get themselves in position to be ready to play our first game in November. And it's going to be a, a process here over the next month or two to get them up to speed in every capacity of playing that position at this level of basketball. Um, we're, we're fine with that, but we have the right kids. They're talented. They're about the things that we're about. I think our fans will instantly resonate with them when they watch them play, but there'll be a process of getting them up to speed on some of the, the details and, and some of the things that you have to do night in, night out at that position. Assuming no news, uh, and you, you'll play a ton of guys Monday, but do, do you have a starting five and are I don't have a starting vibe yet, Scott. And it's funny, I hadn't had that question yet. Yet, so I always laugh and chuckle. You guys think a lot more about that kind of stuff than I do. I, I think the, the the questions that we're trying to answer more importantly than who we roll out in the starting lineups or, you know, who are the guys that are in the rotation. I think that's number one. What are the best combinations to put that rotation together, and who the heck's finishing the game? Yeah, you know, that's that's what I'll tell our players. That's what I believe. And, you know, very, very rarely do the, the group that you start early in the year, the same group that you're starting later in the year. So it, whoever we start on Monday, which I have not figured that out yet, uh, I, it'd be likely that that's not the group we're starting in January. And that's just how it usually plays out. So it'll be, a, especially with all these new faces, it'll be a, a process to figure out not who deserves to start, and maybe a little bit of that, but also the best combination for our team of who starts together and how that impacts substitutions and patterns and all things like that. I mean, gosh, a, a year ago, uh, you know, it's pretty hard to imagine David and Julius not starting or Micah Adams Woods not starting, right? I mean, you know, like that was – there's a couple guys that was just obvious because of what they'd done. Landers and Ollie, it was pretty hard to imagine. It, it's a little different with this group. There's, there's a lot of guys competing – uh, for roles on this team and lineups like I said I care a lot more about who finishes and who plays but starting lineups we're not even close to having that figured out you've talked about 
the, how different the offense is going to be losing some of those guys you just mentioned. How are your guys this year adjusting to how different the plan is going to look offensively? It's been, adjust, it's been an adjustment, right? That's It's kind of why you have a preseason. It's why you have practice. It's, it, you know, like there's a little bit of trial and error. I, I think the the big picture things we're trying to do offensively that we started with, you know, I, I think we've doubled down on that because it appears that that's 100% the right way to play and our guys are improving in those areas and it accentuates our guys' strengths. Some of the details or actions or, you know, the, the things that we're focusing on possession to possession, you know, we're adjusting as we go. And we've learned a lot about this team over the last month. And, and by the way, again, when you have all these new faces, that'll happen throughout the course of November as well. Like, it, it, we won't have it all figured out the first two weeks of games, but that's part of going through those first couple of weeks is learning your team when you start to see different opponents and you kind different of coverages. in that challenge and, like, having the ability to teach these guys as a young basketball coach? I love teaching. I love coaching. Uh, but it's one of my favorite parts of my job. I'm really – I love my job, and one of my favorite parts of it is teaching. Um, and if you've – come to our practices I hope that's obvious uh but that that's one of the things that gets me popping out of bed in the morning is the chance to teach big picture um Wes what is the vision from you for the next step for this program for you this year for this team this year yeah you know I mean big picture it's 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 clear that we want to compete for championships at Cincinnati I mean like that, that's what we're here to do we want to compete for championships we want to help our guys leave here to go on to professional careers and we want to educate our guys like that's the big picture goals here um yeah I think that's known we all know that while we're here uh but day to day is just about getting better and stacking days and, and making those daily deposits to to grow to learn um and that that is how we evaluate day to day did we get better today are we better today than we were yesterday and that's all it's about have you guys had a chance to see their their new home yet and your thoughts on the, the new locker room? Gosh, that, that's uh, I'm. They have, we have not officially moved in there yet. Um, there's so much construction going on around us, you know, and we're you know we're, we're working around that construction. I, I'm, I'm sure a couple guys have been able to peek through some open doors and and see what's going on, but we have not officially walked in there uh, as a group. They're not officially using it, but it's close. I, you know. You know, you, everybody knows how construction goes. I, I thought we were going to be in there a while ago. Then I thought we were going to be in there yesterday. You know, it keeps. I, but I do believe we'll be in there by tomorrow, um, which will be exciting. And it's what, what I'll tell everybody: it's, it is first class. Um, the people that, uh, that, that that donated money to help us with this project, uh, it, we're so thankful. Um, it's as nice as any locker room and lounge, and recovery facility. Is I think there is in sports. I mean, I, it's not even just a college basketball thing. It is done first class. It's going to impact our guys every day, not just because they have some awesome place to spend their time, but that's where they're going to get to know each other. You know, like that's where they're going to make their memories. I mean, I, I, I think the, the facilities where the players interact are the most important facilities on the campus. Starts with the, the facilities they interact on the court together. This would be the second most important one to me. And now we have one of the greatest arenas in college basketball. I can't imagine anywhere better than that. And now we have a, a, a kind of a locker room or basketball facility where they're, when they're not in there on the court, that's where they're hanging out. I, I think that does really matter over time. So Tobes gets a passing grade. Yeah, the, Zach Tobler, uh, who oversaw the construction on this as a former player, which also made it very special as well. And it's been nice to have a former player as you know, I'm, I'm very impatient, guys. So, I mean, I'm probably hovering around that project every day for the last nine months, you know, seeing if we're getting there. And, and it's been nice to have a guy that I know wants it to get done, not just as quickly as I do that's overseeing it, but to the same standard because he played here. And so it's it's been a thrill to have Zach around every day. He's probably not going to miss me bugging him when this thing gets completed, but but we're going to miss having him around on a day-to-day -day basis. Is there anybody on the roster that surprised you guys over the past few weeks, over the summer, that made you say, we might not have had a huge plan for them to get on the court early, but we feel like this is a guy that could help us out with professional stuff? You know, I, th I think a number of guys, there's been aspects of their game that you go, wow, I, you know, I'm, I'm learning them 
as as we go or you know um even returning guys the improvement is notable and so I, I think that's always our job as a coach is uh, we say this all the time like we don't put guys in boxes here like we, we really believe in player development so when we come out for the spring and the summer and our fall preseason we don't sit there and say you're only allowed to do this and you're only allowed to do that because players will surprise you they worked on their game they developed if they're given an opportunity they'll show you some things that you didn't know they could do that's going to happen in our program every single year and it'd be unfair to talk about one guy because there's numerous examples and then as you start to get now into the games you do got to start making sure guys are playing to their strengths and within their roles but every year that changes I, I think the thing that uh, fans uh, will will be shocked about that's the obvious one is the way Victor Lockin's been shooting the basketball I mean it's it's amazing you know and it's been two years in, pro, in, in a work in progress. We just didn't let him shoot him in games last year, but he's been shooting it at an extremely high clip, and that's an example of by not boxing somebody in, you've allowed them to grow into a role, and I'm proud of how we do that here. Two more questions. How much faster are you as a team? And that, yeah, I assume we're going to play fast. Yeah, when, we're, when we got, you know, like all the guys, like you, you throw Aziz and Jamil into that group, uh, the, the, there's there's just so much length and athleticism and depth that you can really sustain playing at an extremely high pace, and that's fun. That's you know what I've always believed in the the most fun way to play, uh, the the way I prefer to play, and and the best way to consistently put yourself in position to win every night is to get a deep team, a talented team out in the open court and continue to put pressure on the defense. We, we, we have the ability to do that with the season, Jamil, for sure. Thoughts on the passing of Bob Knight? Wow. Um, one of the the titans of our game and college sports, and certainly if you're a, a coach, you know, Bob Knight impacted you. I mean, I, there's, there's no way if you're a basketball coach that Bob Knight hasn't impacted you. Um, you know, my, my thoughts and prayers to his family. Um, I, I know his, his son, Pat, is a friend of mine. So my thoughts and prayers with his family, specifically Pat. And then, you know, I, I learned a lot about Coach Knight in two ways. Uh, C- Coach Williams, you know, interacted with him quite a bit and shared a lot of those stories with me about some of the things he learned going to watch his practices years ago or playing golf with them and things of that nature. And I've always kind of relished that and, 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 and taken that to heart. And then uh, I had a guy that you guys know well, Mike Roberts, that we were together for 10 years and still one of my best friends. And, you know, he he uh, re- was recruited by Bob Knight to Indiana, played for him for a very short term before, you know, he, he left – poor Coach Knight left Indiana and then went to work for him at Texas Tech. And they were extremely close. And so I got a lot of stories and, and wisdom passed down uh, through through Coach Roberts, so not, can't say that I had a personal relationship with him. Never met him, uh, but there's so many things that that we do that, in some form or fashion, are derived from the things that he did. And and that's a that that's what happens when you're one of the greatest that's ever coached at any sport. So uh, again, thoughts and prayers with his family. All right, thanks, Coach. Yep. Thanks, thanks. Thanks.